be honest, in any battle royale, you're gonna have those scenarios where the luck isn't in your favor, you're gonna have to be quick thinking on your toes, and therefore, you gotta dig deep for a way out of a situation. You gotta dig deep for a way out of a situation. Today, I wanna talk to you guys about 15 different things, pro tips, if you will, in which can drastically help your game from smaller things to actually include in your gameplay mechanics and in your inventory to just out thinking some players in some regards. We're gonna talk about 16 things in this video that I think can definitely help you out. And coming back to it, it's a battle royale game, so you're never going to have the perfect storm, and chances are you're not gonna be able to take advantage of every single tip in one single game because it is a BR, things are gonna be up to chance, and it's quite possible that the luck sometimes doesn't go in your favor. But for what you can control, let's keep these tips in mind. So with a lot to discuss, let's just jump right into it. First things first, before you even drop, one thing that I would greatly say to consider is to know your stash locations. This is something that can help you choose what your best place to land is, whether it's a hot drop or maybe a little safer off in the distance, but knowing your stash locations can really help you get looted up fast and really early on. There's a great utility website called blackoutmap.com that I would definitely recommend to go checking out. From there, you can end up taking a look at all sorts of different things, where ATVs, where helicopters spawn, where the stashes are, where there are different mystery box locations, and so on and so forth. But there's the great ability to toggle on whatever you want to see on the map and their spawn locations, and of that is the stash locations. Whenever you whittle it down to just showcasing the stash locations, initially it might seem overwhelming because there are a ton of different points in which they could spawn, but they don't all spawn where they are listed. So let's take cargo for example. There's 13 known spawn locations for stashes, but usually about two to three of them will spawn every single game at max. That being said, there could be one, there could be two, or there could be what again, I've seen up to the most of is three. So while there are 13 plotted locations, just keep those points of interest at cargo in mind so that then you can go check those out real quickly while sweeping the area of cargo before going off into the zone. Same goes for every other location on the map. They're not all going to be there. There's going to be a limited amount of them, but if you know the points to check, then you can definitely get looted up a lot faster and get into the action well kitted out. Second tip before we jump actually into the gameplay side of this is make sure that you're switched over to the new inventory loadout. As of recently, there was a new adjustment to the settings in which Blackout now has the ability to quick equip item cycling, meaning that you can use your bumpers to cycle out your healing as well as your utility items instead of having to use your D-pad to go up and then cycle over by hitting the arrows a couple of different times to get to the item that you want to equip. It's a lot quicker and a lot more efficient and doesn't break your hand in the process of trying to play claw while also trying to elude gunfire. Now getting into the gameplay itself, the first big tip and something that a lot of players will slightly pass over because they're keen on getting whatever loot that other player had, kill and and then loot as you go. So let's take an example of, say, landing at construction. You could either kill one player and then try and loot them for the maybe SMG that they had and that's about it, and then get shot in the back while looting, or you can make sure that you clear out the entire area so you have it all to yourself and then you can backtrack and get whatever you need. Same thing goes with lesser engagements as well. If you, say, land at a lesser populated area, you can end up getting one or two kills and then looting on the go and continuously just cycling through instead of having to spend so much time looting, and then ultimately maybe spend five minutes looting and die on your first engagement. The thing about the early game in Battle Royales is that a lot of players aren't looted up all that much, so if you do get something, chances are you're gonna have a good probability to win that gunfight, but even if you don't, the other player may not be kitted out with armor, they just may have a better weapon, or they may not have all that much and you can just take over what they have. So always expect another engagement essentially, always think there's somebody else watching you so that make sure that you have the area clear, or you don't need any loot from the player just ended up killing, well, just pass it by. Sometimes there's not all that much that's even worth your time so you can get right back into the action or back into safety. Next tip on this list is dealing with weaponry, finding your weapon loadout. Forget early game, that sort of thing applies with that last tip of just kill and then loot as you go, but once you've cleared the area of enemies and loot them all and start thinking about mid to late game, to me the best loadout is a mid range and a long range weapon such as a rifle and a sniper or a tactical rifle. The best choices in terms of just damage output start with the Rampart being the best in class with a 46 DPS output, the KN57 with the second best DPS output of 40, and then you have your choice of the ICR7 which is a 37 DPS and minimal recoil, as well as the Vapor XKG with a little bit of a higher fire rate but also the same damage output as the ICR. Grab one of those and you'll be relatively set outside of the long range engagements to which that leads me into the next tip here is make sure you also have some sort of longer range weapon after early game. Shotgun Guns and SMGs are absolutely fantastic to clear buildings in higher populated areas, but come late game, you want to engage players with as much room for escape as possible. I'm not saying that it's terrible to
to get into players' faces, but I'm also saying you want to control the situation as much as possible. If you have good aim, a longer range weapon, and at a distance between the player you're engaging, chances are you won't lose that gunfight. For this, I'd suggest a sniper rifle, like a paladin is my personal preference, but if you're not into that, it's totally fine, and you're also not always going to find a paladin. I tend to shy away from the SDM mainly because of the bullet velocity. It makes for situationally awkward drops and lead times that you have to account for, but things like the Kosh gun, even the Outlaw, are solid choices as well. But if you can't find a sniper, then that's alright because there's still other great options. The best I'd say outside of the snipers is that of the ABR or even, in a last sort of resort scenario, the Swordfish. The ABR can absolutely shred at range, so definitely keep it in mind. Though if you do pick it up, just be aware of the ammo. Because the ABR also shares the 5.56 ammo with a couple of weapons in the Assault Rifle classification. So in that scenario, you want to make sure that you're conscious of either your ammo consumption as you're going to burn a ton of ammo through just a couple of bursts. So you want to be conscious of that and maybe take a weapon that doesn't share the same ammo pool. That just so that you don't have to constantly worry about running out of ammo or trying to scavenge more after picking up some kills. Next tip, kind of piggybacking on the weapons of choice here, play around with some optics. Make sure that you pick up something because they don't take anything away from your inventory if you have a weapon that can equip an optic. Things like the Grav and the MP40 cannot, so be aware of that. But optics don't hurt at all to take, even if you do like some of the iron sights, and in some cases they even do tremendously help. Things like the reflex sight obviously offer a a little bit more precision and same goes for the elo without the iron outline of that reflex sight but the elo adds a little bit more recoil to the weapon itself as compared to say the reflex or if you really want to take it a step further one of the best optics to put on a weapon is the two times or recon scope this is something that actually mitigates nearly all recoil and makes weapons much easier to control one of the best ones to exemplify this is the rampart 17 which has a relatively decent amount of kick on its base weapon but when you toss on the two times it becomes so much more controllable and again when you throw on the grips on that it just becomes something that's an absolute laser pointer with the highest DPS in terms of weapons that are not one shot outside of the Augur DMR. So play around with some of these optics and see which ones you feel comfortable with, but know that each of them do offer actually a little bit of help in precision, not only, but also even in controlling some of that recoil. Outside of that, talking weapons and attachments, make sure that you utilize the new quality of life feature that is the swap and equip mechanic. If you end up taking a look at some weapons on the ground that may either be gold weapons that are fully kitted out or ones that you pick up off of player, you can end up having the ability to hold triangle or Y to swap and equip all the attachments on your current weapon to that weapon you're picking up. So when you come across it, you're not going to initially be able to swap and pick up, say, a golden weapon in which you just transfer all those immediately, but it just takes one smaller extra step where you need to pick up the gold weapon and swap it out for the weapon of your choice, but then re-pick up that weapon of choice by holding the triangle or Y button, and it will then put on all the attachments that are compatible with that weapon. So I know we talked about previously here on the channel picking up weapons that are gold just for the attachments even if you don't necessarily like that so you can then skin them and put them on whatever weapon you want this just makes it one step easier and takes about five to ten seconds off of that which in a br game and especially a populated area can be life or death Next up, when talking about utility and other things to pick up, mesh mines have become my recent primary. It's easy to just absolutely flick and then destroy an oncoming vehicle, whether that be a truck, an ATV, an ARAV, you name it, it's something that's absolutely fantastic. So make sure that you pick up mesh mines because not only can you trap that guy sitting in the bathroom and that doesn't want to move, but you can also then end up taking out any vehicles that may be trying to challenge you as well. Cluster grenades or concussions are absolutely perfect as a secondary, and of course, with that new interface that lets you cycle through your equipment rather fast, it's tremendously easy to swap over from, say, mesh mines to a cluster to a concussion, whatever you need at that given point. So definitely take what I would say is the mesh mines in that primary slot so you have them queued up, but you can then switch over to anything else. Outside of that, the next tip we're going to talk about is perk selectivity. Mid to late game, you might have tough times looting players and actually selecting what gear of theirs to take. And with limited space in your backpack, you're going to need to be selective. The perk that I've gravitated towards as of recently and as of late has been Paranoia by and large. It offers an absolute huge advantage towards mid and longer range, but it might be a little less effective to the player if they're already on top of you. But it does give you that bit of freedom when you're getting from point A to point B to allow you to know if somebody is looking at you and be ready for those engagements because chances are that player is not going to hit their first shot in that split second instant that you get the audio cue so therefore you can end up getting time to pivot adjust from where that audio came from and get ready for that gunfight same thing goes for late game engagements as well it definitely allows you to have a little more comfortability in those final circles to know that all right i'm looking at this 
area, I'm scouting out here. But if somebody tries to look at me from afar off in a different area, I'll know about it. But that certainly does not negate the effectiveness of some other perks as well. The other top three in my books are Dead Silence, Awareness, and Reinforced. Dead Silence obviously allows you to end up being way quieter. Awareness allows you to hear those footsteps of incoming players. And Reinforced allows you to have more resistance against different tacticals. The biggest one that it's a huge help for is Concussions because you're not really even affected. You have a split second of a white screen and that's about it. So those are my top four perks. Definitely, I've personally found playing as a solo that Paranoia is probably the most useful to me and because I use a headset for PlayStation 4 I also have that audio a lot more accessible and be able to pick out the smaller details that playing on a TV you might not so the placement of those top four may shift depending on how you play the game what your equipment may be like and what you deem most important but those are definitely the top four I think to be selective if you have to choose a certain number of perks and you have limited space in your inventory continuing though with the perk discussion a little bit is that when in doubt just use them out I find myself always second guessing, should I use my perks right now? But when it comes down to it, if I have to think that, chances are I probably should. Because it's better to use your perks and have them run out and get that situational awareness of what may be around you than die and not use them at all. Because at that point, it's just wasted and you gave your enemy more ammunition for going up and being well suited for later game engagements. So if you have to ask yourself, should I use the perks? Just pop them. In terms of getting into the more so just mentality things with engagements, let's jump over to our next tip of just being smarter with your engagements. It's crazy how many times I see in duos or quad games where somebody will go for a thirst on a kill even though they have the absolute perfect chance to end up taking out the teammate or teammates in that case where they could secure all those kills. Instead, they try and thirst that one player for that quick and easy kill, and in the process, it ends up getting them killed. So in that sense, take a smarter engagement. Think about where the next enemy is going to be, where they're coming from, and try and finish them off instead of just going for that easy one, unless maybe you are completely doomed. Maybe there's three people shooting at you, and in which case, sure, you can go for that easy kill, but a lot of the times, that's not the case. The next thing advised is absolutely have the high ground as much as possible. If you have two options in a future engagement, that is A, wrap around the bottom portion of a hill to meet a team that is at that bottom, or B, go all the way up to the top and look down on them, take B every single time. If you can have high ground, you not only give yourself the advantage of being able to backpedal if you have to and regain your health or reload or do something like that, but you also have the extra added time to do any of that. So if a player, even just on say a hill where they can push you, they're gonna have to take five to 10 seconds to get from point A to point B, where they're more than likely going to be exposed and you also can regroup and refocus your engagement. So always have the high ground in those situations where it's possible. The next thing I wanna advise is definitely to never corner yourself. Have options, have escape routes. If you need to duck out into cover to heal, the absolute worst location to go is a corner with no exits like a bathroom or the underbelly of a rock formation. If you end up cornering yourself in here, you end up limiting yourself to one escape route, which is through the enemy. And especially in a lot of scenarios where you're playing duos or quads, that is tremendously hard to do. So never corner yourself, always have options and escape routes if possible, and make sure that you utilize them. Outside of that, communication is absolutely key. If you're playing solos, sure, it really can't help you all that much, but a lot of players end up opting to play duos or quads. So if that's the case, be as descriptive or accurate as possible. Attempt to learn the coordinate callouts, and if you can give direct coordinates, that's absolutely perfect. It's worlds more helpful than just that building over there, because chances are there's multiple buildings over there. So the more specific, the better. The final thing I wanna to talk to you guys about today rounds out not only the tips, but also the mentality aspect in just trying to outthink players. Think about where they're going to be coming, how they're going to take the engagement if possible, and then try and adjust so that you catch them off guard. If you know they have a better weapon in close quarters, for example, reposition yourself to make it a better engagement in favor of you. The clip in the background that you'll see, I get rezzed by Ink Slasher, and then I know that we're about to be pinched by these two people pushing us, so he goes down, and I need to use the only little bit of environment that I have to my advantage. Fortunately, I found a way to win the first gunfight unscathed, but then the following reposition was the absolute biggest key. It allowed me to take a gunfight and at first even surprise the player from a different location that he was not expecting, but then also have covered a sponge, some of his shotgun pellets that otherwise probably would have killed me on such low health already. So definitely try and think about the engagement from the enemy's perspective and then see what they wouldn't expect 
and then do it. But that said, that's where we're gonna round out this video here and the tips that I wanna give you for Blackout. I've been really enjoying Blackout again as of recently, so I wanna change it up, do something, and give you guys some heads up on how to improve your Blackout game, whether you're jumping in for the first time, or maybe even if you're somebody that's a seasoned veteran, you can implement some of this stuff into your game. You might not necessarily consciously think about all that much. So, wanted to give you guys a few heads up and a few pointers here and there that could be useful, maybe not, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything you guys would like to add to this list, maybe take away? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, MP, Blackout, Zombies. We got you covered the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff, so if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those, so if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Well, that's another way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Might as well express. So I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.